<laughs> Time for Waluigi! I'm gonna be honest here, guys. You surprised me. My subscriber base seems to be made up of some serious lore beards, which I love. Lovers of Elder Scrolls, Dark Souls, Warcraft, and so on. But when faced with the most recent poll, you chose this bastard, just by a hair. And honestly, bless you for it, because Waluigi is an absolute gem. A diamond in the rough, you might even say. A villain so goofy and underutilized, the fans have taken it upon themselves to elevate him because Nintendo seems allergic to the poor guy. So in this video, I want to do a few things. I want to, of course, as we usually do, look back at the history of Waluigi. But I also want to try to analyze why he seems to be so cast aside and forgotten. And finally, I want to dream up some hypothetical games from an alternate universe where Waluigi gets his starring role, because lord knows they would sell like hotcakes. Make sure to drop a like before we get started because it really does help out in distributing this useless information around. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe. So to begin, Waluigi was not made by Nintendo. Yes, that is right. A bombshell of knowledge, I'm sure, because our story actually begins with Camelot Studios, the developer who created the absolute classic Game Boy Advance RPG series, Golden Sun. In the late 1990s, Camelot was tapped by Nintendo to develop an innovative 3D sports game for the N64. Now having a long history of tennis games on their consoles, it was decided that that game would be Mario Tennis, featuring all of your favorite Nintendo characters. So it's Nintendo, sports, they make party games, this had to be a multiplayer experience, right? So it was deemed necessary to have this tennis game function in doubles mode so the whole family could have some fun. Many of these characters very naturally pair off. You got Mario and Luigi, uh, Daisy and Peach, Bowser and Boo, Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. Where the hell is Diddy Kong? And of course, Wario and... Uh, this is where the developers were. This was the moment they all probably looked at each other, scratching their heads, when some absolute genius in the back of the room stood up and quietly said, Waluigi? That is literally the origin story of Agent Purple. Wario needed a doubles partner, so Camelot went in the war room and created a villain to play opposite Luigi, much like that Wario and Mario dynamic. And it's just hilarious to me that the same exact character designer to create Isaac, Garrett, and all these super cool Golden Sun characters also made Waluigi. Exactly like the name Wario, Waluigi is a portmanteau of the Japanese word for bad and Luigi. And let me just say, I love his design, man. Where Wario has the figure of a bowling ball, Waluigi is more of a scarecrow. He's gangly and sharp. His logo always also made me laugh because, uh, you know, the Wario one works. So the designers were probably just, uh, eh, flip the L, the kids will get it. And we sure did. Also, a side note here, at the very same time, Camelot wanted to make Wa Peach and Wa Daisy type characters. But Nintendo said, hey, take it easy over there, man. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. So the lore here in Mario Tennis is that all of the characters were having a friendly little tennis tournament. But Wario and Waluigi were not invited. And that is very mean. So the two crashed the party to join in. And they even brought their own rackets, dude, with their logo on them. Just let them play with you, come on. But this first moment ends up being a key moment for Waluigi. This is our first ever look at the character, and he's already being set up to be a bit of a laughing stock. His rival, naturally, Luigi, who has made a living off being scared of everything, is super relaxed, and he even says, Luigi's not the place. Now, okay, Wario's also kind of a goofy guy, right, across all of his games, but he's also a legit presence as a bad dude. I mean, he's badass, man. He's strong. I guess you could say he's effective at what he does. But if Waluigi right away can't even intimidate Luigi, it's just a tough start. So apparently, Waluigi has already been in cahoots with Wario before this, off camera, so to speak, and has opposed Mario and Luigi for some time now. Though at no point in the history of the character to today have we learned exactly what his relation to Wario is. They could be homies, brothers, cousins, who knows. So Waluigi is fully playable in Mario Tennis, and he quickly became a bit of a fan favorite. 
I mean, he was a fresh face in this 3D era of Nintendo, and his goofiness and potential showdowns with Luigi set the stage for many epic battles into the future. He then went on to appear right away in Mario Party 3 just a year later in 2001 as a playable character, which again, seems like a big inclusion, doesn't it? Surely this dude's gonna be a big star just like his counterparts. But as the years went on, Nintendo was only inviting Waluigi to the party when they needed to fill the roster out a little bit. Another tennis game on the Game Boy Color, Mario Party 4 and 5, Mario Golf, Mario Kart Double Dash. By now we're getting into the mid-2000s, but wait, hold up. Hold the phone. Super Smash Bros. Melee came out in 2001 too, surely. You can kick some ass with Waluigi in there, right? Well, I guess Wario didn't make the cut either, so <laughs> hey, it's all good. Next time, next time, the Wabros will have their day in Smash. No worries. But by this point, we are into the GameCube era, and Waluigi definitely had made that impact with fans. He'd always been a favorite pick in the sports games, Mario Party, etc. I think because he is sort of an enigma, while also being somewhat pathetic. He's often characterized as being honestly a straight up loser. The most common character trait that is portrayed across all of his appearances is self-pity. It seems like for him, everything goes right for everyone except Waluigi. And that, my friends, is the source of his somewhat basic villainy. A classic tale of a guy who works hard, looks damn good, but the ladies still don't like him, and the homies still don't hit him up to chill. But what else is in the equation? I mean, how can we even consider him a villain? Well, he's certainly mischievous, a cheat, and has no problem playing dirty. Now, while these things haven't been narratively hammered out, sadly, his displays of frustration, skills in certain sports games like the Mario Baseball series, and even the stupid trophy descriptions in Smash Bros. give us that sort of background, and you know, we'll come to those traits in the final chapter of this video. There are some really funny tidbits about Waluigi that I think are worth sharing. Like, all the times it's mentioned how strong his legs are. The guy is a certified stomper. There was also this now defunct Wario website that said Wario puts Waluigi on a rack to make him even taller constantly than he already is. That is very strange information that I didn't necessarily need to put in the video, but hey, there you go. Onwards through the GameCube years, Waluigi showed up in, well, mainly sports games. He busted a move or two in Mario DDR, which everyone had, right? I think I actually did have that. He got to play some soccer, some hoops, join the Olympics, and it was looking like Super Smash Bros. Brawl might be a big moment for him. So fans eagerly awaited the final roster, and no way, Wario's in there, man. But no way, no, there must be some sort of mistake. And this is the point where it became obvious to me and other Nintendo fans that something was actually wrong here. Something was amiss. Someone at Nintendo had personal beef with Waluigi. I mean, you put my man in all these ensemble games and then nix him from the biggest one, the system seller. But again, we will come back to this neglect in just one second. Onwards from the Wii era, it was, well, more of the same. Mario Party sports titles, Mario Kart, this goes on and on. You get the picture. All the way to today. Mario Golf came out like a week ago. Waluigi has been around for 21 years. I mean, he's a grown man now, and not a single appearance in Super Smash Bros., not a single spin-off game, and no featured roles as the main antagonist to Luigi, which was sort of the point. I mean, nothing. He has completely become a meatbag a body for them to throw in a game to fill out the roster, and nothing more. So now, we must ask, why? Well, to be frank, I have not a single clue, but let's speculate for fun, eh? My first theory is probably the most likely, and it's that Nintendo doesn't really care for Waluigi all that much. After all, a third-party developer was the sole designer of the character, though apparently Shigeru Miyamoto personally approved it and assisted in the process. But still, it was sort of implemented on a whim. Maybe there was some internal disagreement at Nintendo about okaying his design and giving Luigi his own Wario, essentially. I mean, take the glory of Waluigi out of the equation completely for a second and transport yourself to 1999. Does it sound like a good idea to pretty much clone Wario and make him tall and purple? Yappers. 
Okay, I agree, it does sound like a good idea, but for Nintendo, maybe from a business and character cast perspective, there was some serious disagreement. I wouldn't be surprised if he's sort of a polarizing dude over there to this day. But they know fans like him, so they throw him in a bunch of the party games and just move on. This leads to my second theory. Now put on your tinfoil hats, boys. It's that the slander is all manufactured. They are, of course, aware that fans have been clamoring for Waluigi to appear in more games and get some more screen time, and they are especially aware of the demands for Waluigi to be in Super Smash Bros. I mean, that's been going on for damn near 20 years. So what if they're using this angle and this trend to continue to stymie the man, all while watching from the ivory tower as the hordes of rabid Nintendo fans construct idols in the streets and worship a character that hardly even exists? I mean, it creates buzz. It creates junk online about their characters and games like memes and this poopy video you're watching right now. Again, this likely isn't the case, but I think regardless of the reality of the situation over at Nintendo, Waluigi being disrespected has been a ton more free press than if he was just another well-balanced and represented character, right? I don't know. I'm losing my mind. And the third theory is kind of a combo pack of the first two, that there has been some internal disagreements about the character's worth, and they are aware of the cult following that the character has. So they're just saving up for a big old fat reveal as we speak. A video game starring Waluigi even, or just announcing him as the final fighter for Smash Ultimate, something like that. Something they know will ignite Nintendo fans like nothing in the history of humanity, and thus making them millions of dollars. This is a very optimistic theory, I admit. Probably won't happen, sadly, but a man can dream. So that will then lead us into the final segment here today, my friends. Video games. If there were to be that breakthrough moment for Waluigi, what could it look like? How could we apply Waluigi's character traits, visual style, and reputation into gameplay? Well, let's get right to it with game number one, Waluigi World. Let's start with that classic formula tailored for our fine baddie. If you have watched my Wario video, which you should, you would know how much I love his games and how Nintendo finally crafted the feeling of playing as a big, heavy, greedy, and evil dude who wants to ride around in his Cadillac and just get money. It's truly incredible. So for Waluigi, however, why not make this into something sports related? I mean, this man is obviously an all-star in multiple sports, a freak athlete. Imagine, it's a classic Nintendo 3D platformer, but each world or kingdom Waluigi visits is dedicated to a different sport he's competed in. You could have like golfing green meadows or uh, high pass hoops, terrible tennis tundra, you get the picture. He would get to flex all his skills, obtain new ones, and showdown in 1v1s with area bosses. Maybe the final boss could even be Luigi. That would be incredible. Okay, moving right along. Game number two, Luigi's Mansion 4. Luigi's Mansion is one of my favorite game series out there, period. 3 was amazing, and it really got me thinking. Man, how could they get Waluigi in here somehow? King Boo has been the established bad guy to oppose Luigi, which makes a lot of sense. He scares the hell out of Luigi, and it's canon lore that Waluigi does not. But in Luigi's Mansion 3, with the addition of Gooigi, and the system of swapping between the two, I mean, what if the next time Luigi gets scammed, he's stuck in the haunted location with Waluigi. We know that Luigi's homeboys always get turned into paintings, so what if this time, King Boo also captured, say, Wario and Daisy? We could see our two Ouija's forced into a partnership. You could have Waluigi areas and Luigi areas, different types of abilities available. Maybe Waluigi's able to fit into tighter areas because he's such a beanpole and has a special vacuum that's faster at sucking but has a higher failure rate akin to Waluigi's entire life. I think this could be amazing, and maybe the most realistic possibility on this list. Seeing Waluigi interact with his counterpart would just do a ton to develop him, and this setting is perfect to do so. So the third and final game I will make up, and other people have made up similar things online, is Wario and Waluigi Double Trouble. These two are friends, brothers, husband and husband, whatever. It doesn't matter. They're obviously tight. And what better way to throw Waluigi into the spotlight than alongside Wario. We've seen in little cutscenes and stuff like that that they definitely get into some mischief together. 
and I for years have been dreaming of a sort of heist game starring Wario and Waluigi. In my mind, this is almost like a Sly Cooper type of game, a light collect-a-thon with some stealth mechanics. Let's say the plan is to infiltrate Peach's castle or Bowser's casino, or even King Boo's castle, or all three, damn it, and stealing some gems so that the boys can fence the goods and head south of the border with the king's fortune. You could control both of them and swap between them freely, with Wario being a demolitions expert and Waluigi slinking through the shadows. With Nintendo's level design and platforming prowess, this could really be like an all-time great Nintendo game. <sighs> well, that was kind of depressing. This is the bottom line. People love the hell out of Waluigi for whatever reason. As a villain, his growth has been severely stunted thanks to some bitterness, I guess, at Nintendo. But that neglect has morphed him into a hero of the people over the years. So maybe I've made the wrong video, man, damn. But it is his villainy, his comically stupid mustache, and nasally voice that demand this kind of attention from the fans. He is just so goofy, misunderstood, and underutilized that people can't help but deify him. I seriously do hope we get to see more of him into the future. Uh, I think Push will come to shove, and he comes to Smash as the last fighter or something crazy like that. I mean, the hype is right there, waiting to be made, and all Nintendo need do is pull the damn trigger. Thank you everyone for watching and listening to the end. It is always greatly appreciated. The growing support on this channel has been phenomenal, and it means a lot to me to read your comments and feedback, so keep it coming. Shout out to all the patrons, or the coffers as we call them on the Discord, and I will see you all soon. Until next time, peace.